that's right, come listen now because this is another fun episode of American Brews and Tunes. Here's a theme song, you know it's not a mean song. It's a good song, just as it should song. American Brews and Tunes. Oktoberfest! We're back! It's American Brews and Tunes! <laughs> yeah, right? It's time to listen. Yeah, this is episode number 56. Our last episode, as you may or may not remember, was a, a, a repeating episode. It was number 55, so we listened to repeating bands. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I, I listened to The Decemberists, What a Terrible World, What a Beautiful World, and you listened to... I listened to I Am The Avalanche, their album, Wolverines. Great albums. Great albums. Um, so we're coming back to you this week with a one-off. Oh, yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know what that means, a one-off is where we review one album and try one beer. Yeah, just like a shorter version of the regular programming. It literally is a shorter version. Yeah. By however much time it's shorter, just subtract it. You just des- You decide. Just use your heads. Use math. Don't use mental math, though. That's use, a, a, use a Mental calculator. math is baloney. Mental when teachers, I, I can I can understand that they wanted to teach us that because you know it's probably good to be able to do on the fly. But we've got smartphones, calculators are everywhere, people. And if you don't have a smartphone, it's just not worth doing math. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably not <laughs> worth typing into if you have like a flip phone. Remember the calculators on that flip I mean, phones? It worked just fine. <laughs> it worked, but it was weird. It was, it was weird, difficult. but yeah, it was much more difficult than just pushing the button like a normal calculator. Well, now if you have an iPhone, or you could even ask Google, but I can ask Siri to, to do math for um, me. Um, Siri, what's two plus two? Uh, a fun little trick though is to ask Siri what is zero divided by zero. Oh yeah, because she'll tell you how that's impossible. He's like, if you have zero friends and you divide that by zero friends, you cannot do it because you don't have any friends. Sad. <laughs> it was stupid, something goofy like that. But enough about Siri and math, because all those yeah. things are weird. Boring. Boring. Actually, Siri can be kind of cool, but still, boring. Um, you want to know it's not boring? This podcast? Yeah. I hope. <laughs> we can't decide because we're too close. <laughs> um, anyways, this week we're going to be reviewing a great album from a great band. Oh, yeah. The, the band is Hostage Calm, and I know, it was I don't know how many episodes ago, but Jesse had reviewed their third album, which is called Please Remain Calm. Yeah. But this week, we are going to review their last album, Die On Stage. Um, somebody <laughs> actually did Die On Stage. Do you know anyone who's, who's done that? Um, I can no. only think of Dimebag Daryl from T- Pantera. Oh, really? The guitar he died player? on stage? He got shot on stage by a fan. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. R.I.P. Dimebag Daryl. That's crazy. I mean, I I don't think it's great when people die in general, when their life is cut short, but I guess he went out doing what he loved. Yeah, if you, but... If you can find any silver lining, but still, it's really so dark. So weird, a fan shot him? I don't know what the... Maybe they weren't a fan. Either way, it was someone in the audience who, who did it, I think. That's crazy. I could be getting my facts wrong, but I know it was like a fan or some... It wasn't someone like in the band or like... A, wow. Dark. But anyways, that's the album we will be reviewing for you guys. Um, yeah, hey, hey. And like we said, we're both trying one beer this episode. Yeah. Um, what let's, is that beer? Let's get on the fall train. I think you've Woo-hoo. been on the fall train this past few episodes with I your have Oktoberfest. Been on the fall train. Are we having and another I thought, Oktoberfest? I thought maybe we'll switch it up a little bit. Wait, we're not having an Oktoberfest? Nope, but it's definitely a fall beer. What? And what else could say fall than a nice round orange thing? I know you're thinking the sun, or an orange, <laughs> or an orange, but... Grapefruit? No. That's kind of like yellow. Nectarine? Oh, good choice. Tangerine. But also not that. Also not that. Keep guessing. <laughs> Blood orange? <laughs> <laughs> orange bowling balls! <laughs> That's a basketball! Right. We're having a basketball beer! <laughs> no. What would that even mean, a basketball beer? I don't know. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> Part of the net... Is in the or part of the basketball leather is in the, in the wart. That sounds disgusting. Yeah, it does. It seems like sweaty and gross. Gross. Even though I guess sweat probably doesn't get Athletic. too much on the. Yeah, just that's just weird. I don't like that. But anyway, you probably already guessed what this orange thing is, so I'll say it now. Pumpkin. <laughs> Pumpkin. <laughs> it's not a sweet potato, or for some of you, yam. A yam. Yep. Uh, it's a pumpkin. Yeah, that's what we're having a a pumpkin ale from Schlafly. 
A have St. You, Louis brewery. Have you ever had anything from Schlafly? Yes. I know I had um, one of their summer, uh, uh, Hell is Lager from Schlafly on yeah. one of our earlier episodes. Yeah. And I've had quite a few of their, their brews, and they're a great brewery from yeah. Missouri, from St. Louis, Missouri. From St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, great brewery. Um, I have here a description of the beer itself. Uh, would you like for me to read it to all the people? Yes. What? Commence with the reading. All right, I shall. Schlafly Pumpkin Ale blends the spices of harvest with full-bodied <laughs> sweetness for a beer that tastes like pumpkin pie. <laughs> there it is. A special release, Pumpkin Ale, is available for a limited time with a new style every few months. Wow. Good on you, Schlafly. Yeah. Um, I have a better description, though, on okay. untapped. <laughs> um, this says, I feel like this will give a better description of the taste in general. Yeah. <laughs> Um, according to Untapped, the style guide, here's what it says from Schlafly directly. Our pumpkin ale has a bold, big pumpkin taste flavored with pumpkin, cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove. So that Ooh. you get all the spices you'd expect from pumpkin pie. I do pie, like clove. The space, spices. With little bitterness and a malty backbone, the flavors of pumpkin and spices will take the lead. Take the lead, pumpkins. This clocks in at 8% ABV, so it's a little higher than you'd expect, but it's only 16 IBUs. Yeah. So it's not going to be bitter, but it's going to be a little more boozy than your Crazy. traditional, uh, what you'd expect probably. Yeah. Um. So what say you? Shall we crack these and uh, check on the color and the everything else? What say I? Yeah, what say you? I say open sesame. Or as Dana Carvey would say in Master of Disguise, open, open a sesame, open a sesame, open a sesame. <laughs> open a sesame. <laughs> Is that movie racially insensitive? <laughs> Maybe just that part. I don't know. Uh, there's probably a lot of parts that are in that movie. Yeah. It was but for I'll those of you who don't know what we're referencing, we're talking about Master of Disguise, Dana Carvey's classic uh, movie. It, it got horrible reviews and didn't do very well commercially. Yeah, but it was hilarious. <laughs> it still is hilarious. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, when I was growing up, I must have rented this from our our local uh, rental place. I don't know what you call those. Was it? Eagle Video. It was Eagle Video, which is connected to Giant Eagle, little restaurant, not restaurant, a little uh, grocery store <laughs> chain in Western Pennsylvania, restaurant. Ohio, West Virginia, that kind of area. Yeah. Um, but according to the Pittsburgh accent, you say Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle. For Giant Eagle. So but they said Eagle Video. I rented so much of that video so many times. Yeah. I can smell this beer already. Yeah, same here. Uh, and I'm not even holding this near my I face. I probably would have gotten, rented this movie from Blockbuster. Blockbuster. They're or Hollywood big, big Video. Big national chain, yeah. This this smell this beer smells exactly what I would expect. <sighs> it smells pretty good. I'm not surprised at all by anything. I smell the spices like the clove and nutmeg and the and cinnamon. cinnamon and the pumpkin. Now I will I will I, will I don't have... even know if I can pick the pumpkin out actually really? because when I like it's probably there. It's there. Maybe it's more like yam yamish. Could be. I I'm just always like the the smells that I recognize and look for are always these flavors like the 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 spices and the sweet stuff and yeah everything that's not the pumpkin. Yeah. Now I will say before. I am not super partial to pumpkin beers. Why not? Because normally they're quite sweet. They can and I'm be. I'm not the biggest fan of sweetness. Uh, but be- breweries is... like Southern Tier have uh, subverted that a little bit by making exactly. pumpkin or the warlock, which is that pumpkin stout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree so, with you. I've had a lot of really sweet ones, especially I lo- I the. Looked... Especially which one? Sorry to interject. The uh, the remember the Curious Travelers, yeah, pumpkin shandy or yeah. whatever it was. Really, it was a Jacko Traveler. Really sweet. Really sweet. Yeah. Um, if you like sweet beers, that's a great one to get. Uh, go for it. Yeah. A little cinnamon sugar on the the rim of the glass. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sweetness. So the reason I I got got this one today is because it's by a it's by Schlafly, mm-hmm. and b it got like a four average of four on Untapped out of five. So I was like, "All right, yeah. I'll give it a shot. I'll I'll throw caution to the wind and try something that I don't normally get because of sweetness." Fair enough. I mean, the as, color looks like an amber. Just a quick note: looks like a as, nice amber ale, as Jimmy World would say. Sweetness. sweetness. Shall we give it a try? Yeah, you're right. It's a nice red uh, amber, kind of like dark amber yeah. color. Looks, it, looks it looks like nice. fall. It, look, it does. It look looks like fall. fall. It looks oh. like it looks. I was gonna say something. About, <laughs> I was gonna say something about. Liking it to a fall pooped in a glass. Um, okay. It would be that color. <laughs> I guess be, That's, that is a description. I guess kind of a liquidy Ew. number two. <laughs> yeah, this is getting too, 
<laughs> Too descriptive. Uh, sorry, guys. So, as we always say in American Brews and Tunes, when we're about to cheers our beer and drink it down. <laughs> Shit. I just really like poop humor. <laughs> I know. It's the best humor. It I don't is. care if you don't like lowbrow. It's great. I don't care if I'm almost 30 years, years old, guys. Poop humor is the funniest. Already, I can tell you, this is not nearly as sweet as most of the other pumpkin beers. Ooh, and it is no, much more not. pumpkin-y. Yeah. Um, like, it tastes like a yam or a pumpkin that... that uh, Ooh, yeah. Well, how would you class... It's hard to classify that taste other than saying it tastes like a, a yam or a pumpkin. I would say it tastes more like a yam. Yeah. Like, if you can imagine having a sweet potato or a yam, whatever you want to call Ooh, it, and baking like it... A- and you put like the the obviously you'll put some cinnamon sugar or whatever you want on top of it. Have you ever had sweet potato casserole? Yes, that's what this tastes like. It tastes like this, but if you are reserved with the sweetness, because I've had yeah. one with like the marshmallow and oh yeah, I'm not stuff. talking about any of that with no marshmallows, just yeah. with like the pecans on top. Just a little bit of sweetness, but it's this is really good. It's yeah. really really reserved in the sweetness. Yeah. Good job, Schlafly. Yeah, good job, Schlafly. Uh, this is a great beer. I'm, there's I'm like a nice, really sen- surprised. Since it's eight percent, there's kind of like a little hint of booziness. A little warming, but it, I don't think it tastes boozy. But I think it's, it's got a nice little though. warming warmness to it. Yeah, and the spices aren't overpowering. Exactly. The palate. Most of the time, when you get like a fall beer or a a pumpkin beer, whatever you want to call it, um, it's really, really overpowering the spices. Very overpowering. Yeah. I didn't want a cinnamon beer. I wanted a pumpkin beer. Yeah, exactly. Like that. But this I is great. I didn't want to just taste cloves. This is it. I wanted yams. This is really good. I'm really happy with this, actually. I, I, I would get this again. Would you? Yeah, I'd yam out to this again. <laughs> it's a yam. It's a yam. Yam on, guys. Yam, yam on. on, everybody. Um, I would say that this is a good beer. I, I'd probably give it four. I, uh, 3.75 or yeah, four. I'd go 3.75 or four. Um, but I'm, I'm happy five. with it. Yeah, I like it. Shall we move on to the album? We shall. All right, like we said before, this is Die on Stage by Hostage Calm. Oh, oh. And I mentioned it was their final, their last album, but I, I now it's time to say it's their final album. Yes. Um, this came out in 2014. It's their fourth album, and it came out in September. And in October, they announced that they were going to break up. Yeah. One month after releasing it, pretty much. Do you know why they broke up? I'm not. I feel like I maybe sure. asked, asked you this in the last. I'm not entirely really sure. They didn't really. Calm. From what I remember of their their message that they talked about their plans to break up, I don't think they said why. They just said it was a tough decision or something like. Mm. Like I can't remember off the top of my head. Who knows? That's too bad, though. Yeah, I was bummed out. Really bummed out. Yeah. Uh, I might have touched upon how I started listening to these guys on the last episode when you reviewed Please Remain Calm, but I'll touch upon it once more. Okay. Um, It was for this album cycle. Before it came out, they were releasing a couple singles, and they released a single called A Thousand Miles Away From Here. Yeah. And I heard that song because both I Am The Avalanche and The Swellers had tweeted about it, talking about how it's a great song. Yeah. So I listened to it. I was like, oh, this is a great song. You're like, oh, this is dope. Yeah. So after hearing that, I pre-ordered the album, and I think I texted you a link to that song. I was like, yeah, you gotta check so. this out, man. This is awesome. And I think I checked it out, and I was like, oh, that is pretty good. But then I never listened to the album whenever it came out. Oh no, I did. I think you did because I yeah. think I, I text whenever they released the full thing, or you could stream it. I think I, I let you know about that too. Yeah, because I uh, because I remember listening to it and being like, oh, this album's so good. And then I remember showing people and being like, guys, check this album out. It's so good. And they didn't listen to it. <laughs> well, people are idiots. Sometimes they are. Sometimes you don't know what you have until it's gone. Sometimes or, you I don't guess know what you I guess for the people who didn't know about got. them, it's sometimes they don't know what they don't have. Sometimes they don't know what they're missing. I <laughs> yeah, they don't know the, what they're uh, missing. What's it called whenever it's like a saying, but it's, it's a different word? Idiom? I guess. It, <laughs> like in that scene in Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Which scene? Uh, whenever he's uh, that's only r- a flesh wound running away from the from the tower with, with the maiden in distress, quote unquote. But it's the little it's like the son who's like a pansy. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then he, it's, there's like a battle ensuing, and then uh, John Cleese's character is like, "I need to get going" or something like that. And then he's like talking to his servant, and uh, he's like going to swing across the whole crowd, and then he'd be like, he says something about it's not in my and then his servant's like, idiom, sir? <laughs> idiom, sir? And then he's like, yes, not in my idiom. And then he <sighs> swings across the whole crowd. That's classic British humor. Yeah, true. Well, everything Monty Python does is... If you look up the definition of classic British humor, it's Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <pretty> <laughs> let's die on stage, shall we? Yes, um, let's. 
I'm just going to give a little precursor. I think all of the songs are worth listening to, so I will not give ratings. I will just give my four recommendations. Thumbs are up. Thumbs are up to the whole album. Uh, the first song is called When You Know. Nice. Great song. Very good song. Great song. I think it's a, a great idea of, of their sound because they've yeah. got a, a very wide range of sounds. Like a really wide range of sound. Um, on this album, there's a lot of sounds, but even in previous albums and from album to album, they, they evolve drastically. Like they started yeah. off as a hardcore punk band and then their second album had some like Latino influence and then they had some classical stuff with acapella um, yeah little orchestration and then here they've got some they like, get some like 50s pop and yeah. some like bubblegum pop yeah uh, i'll save that definition for a little later in another oh, song okay. um, but i think this song's like a nice shiny pop song with a really catchy melody and that's yeah. a great example of what's to come yeah i would say in so in part um but this is a really good song i think yeah. i think it's basically just a love song about love and yeah uh, there's a lot of love songs on this album. I'll yeah, say that. there are a lot of love songs. On um, this they album. usually have some pretty socially conscious songs, some political stuff. I think it's a little more reserved here. Yeah, I think uh, than so. Than the previous efforts. But... I was reading about that earlier today, and mm-hmm. they said that they were really in support of the uh, equal rights for marriage, mm-hmm. and like they they like gave away a free album for anybody who like signed a petition to. Send that bill to Congress. Then send a bill to Congress. Congress making gay marriage legal. That would have been their second album, the self-titled one, because they had a song in there called "Bullet or the Ballot, Ballot or the Stone." I think is what it's yeah. called. And it was a song for prop, whatever that proposition was for for equal marriage. Yeah. Um, and in Nashville, um, at a local venue called Rocket Town, it's a private venue owned by Michael W. Smith, so it's a Christian venue. They've got some some rules and stuff like the bands aren't allowed to swear and yeah no crowd no, surfing no alcohol um but one of their employees wore a hostage calm shirt um in the back it said i support support same-sex marriage and yeah. he got fired really yeah oh my gosh but i mean like there's a lot of outrage and then um a lot of bands boycotted the venue mm. i think you should be able to wear what you want to wear but it Technically, it was a Christian privately owned uh, yeah. company. So, but technically, you probably shouldn't have worn that. Yeah, I'm sure in the employment guide there was something that said that, but it was very public when it happened. I yeah, remember that's pretty that. crazy. Um, so, moving on to track number two, which is called A Thousand Miles Away from Here. Recommended. Yep. If I had to recommend songs, I would definitely recommend this one. Yeah. Uh, th- like I said, this is the first song I heard from them, and it was a, literally enough to sell me on pre ordering the whole album. Yeah. And I'm glad that I heard it. If I had missed this, I probably would have missed the band. Yeah. Um, missed them all together. Yeah, and I pr- pretty much did miss them <laughs> because I started listening to them, and then they announced the Nashville show with I think Neck Deep. I can't remember who it was, but I was gonna buy tickets, and then Hostage Calm broke up, broke up, and canceled the tour. So I was like, "Well, so no crazy. tickets now." Anyways, a thousand miles away from here is one of the outliers on the album because it's a little bit more heavy. Yeah, it's a little bit more like um, a traditional little bit punk more, song, m- more punky than the rest of the album. Uh, but boy, does it rip, and it's such a good song. Do 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 speed collision. Such a good song. I think it might be about falling out uh, of sorts, maybe between a friends or a romantic. Yeah, so it's hard to tell. By the music video, it's like a, the story of a girl leaving him. Yeah, and or a girl moving away and him not about knowing about it or something like that. Well, he's like having his problems, but but she's a thousand miles away. So yeah, you know, it's it's over. A great song though. Check it's, it out, you guys. Yeah, I would say that's probably my favorite song on the album. It's up there for me. It's hard to pick a favorite because I go back and forth a lot with a ton of these songs. Yeah. Um, if I could, I'd recommend probably three quarters of the album, but <laughs> I had to limit myself a little bit to four tenths. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on to track number three, which is called Love Against. Another recommendation for love me. Love Against. Yeah, I, lo- I love this song too. It, it's such a great uh, message, just like a positive message. Yeah, it's another love song, um, and I think it's a uh, love that they're trying to fight for that's looked down upon or forbidden. Yeah, perhaps. what are some of the lyrics? He's like, love against all reason and consequence. Yeah, that's some of the lines. Love against. Love, love against the anthem of the anonymous. Yeah. Love against their unconsciousness. Uh, and the walls they built around everything that you wanted. Uh, so he's talking about how it's love against all these constructs, all these yeah. barriers, all these, as he says, walls as he says walls. they talk about tearing the walls down later but 
it's a great message, but also it's so gall darn catchy. Yeah, I know. Um, I just I really like the chorus. Maybe another that ball hard for you. Oh yeah. They are fall hard for you. So good. Do, 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 do. Um, I don't know what's all I have to say about that one. Yeah, other than it's just it's, a good song. It's, it's a great message. It's super catchy. Um, it's it fits right in with everything else in the album. Yeah. Um, recommended. I'm recommended. Shall we move on to the next song? Let's. Track number four is called Someone Else, and I think they switch up the sound here. They definitely do. It's a do. lot less poppy and happy sounding. Yeah, it's a little bit more minor sounding. Yes. Um, so I w- it's, it's still a catchy it's song, not, but it's, it's not melodically happy or catchy. Yeah, in, it's, in, it's in the a way slower tempo, songs. and I wouldn't say more minor sounding, but it's just less poppy. Yeah, And then it fits in with the theme because... I, Based on the lyrics and, and what he's saying, I, I think it's about him, and I feel pretty confident in saying this is what mm-hmm. the message is, uh, deciding that he's changed enough for, for somebody else. Like he's oftentimes when there's usually romantic relationships involved, someone cha- may change to please the other person, and he's yeah. fed up with that, saying, This is the last time I, I've become someone else for someone, for someone else. else. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's slower and it's. More contemplative sounding, I guess, than the other ones. Someone else for someone else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I like that song. It's, yeah, good. it's a good one. Uh, moving on to a drastically different song. Yeah. Track number five is called Fallen Angel. And this is the song that I think is bubblegum pop sounding. Yeah. It do, sounds do, really do, 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 do. happy. Do, do, do. Almost cheesy yeah, happy. A little bit. Um, but they've it's, got like it's the, catchy. They got the xyl- xylophone. Do, xylophone do, 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 do. It's like some type of xylophone or mallet key instrument. Mallet based instrument. Yeah, yeah but, I believe it's xylophone. Yeah, probably sounds like it anyway. Um, but this song, I think, also has some political implications um, because he talks about like them being red, white, and blue, and yeah. like for the USA and being the fallen angel. Yeah. Um. So you think it's a love song, but I think there's more to it. Um, maybe someone who's disillusioned, perhaps, to the uh, what the country stood for, maybe. Could be, yeah. Uh, it it's it's hard sense. for me to tell, but I think there's definitely more than what the happy, cheesy-sounding pop song would suggest. Yeah. Um, it's probably my least favorite song on the album. Oh, really? Yeah, but I, I would like never it. skip it. I like yeah. it a lot. I just think every other song is better. Okay. Yeah. One song has to be the weakest. That doesn't mean I don't like it. That's true. You're yeah. right. I do like it quite a bit. I just mm-hmm. like everything more. <laughs> Moving on to track number six, which I definitely like more. It's called Your Head and Your Heart. I yeah. recommend this song. It's a good song. Uh, I really connect with the line that says, you said if this year's like the past, then I don't think I could last. Mm-hmm. Um, for me personally, when I uh, encountered this album, I was at what I would consider a very vulnerable time in my life. Yep. Um, and so I, I took that lyric and a lot of other lyrics in this song kind of really connected to it on a personal level and I, i'm sure they meant something for, for themselves but i kind of warped into what i wanted to mean for myself and i, I leaned on this song quite a bit yeah because uh, i think this is a really emotionally heavy song uh, about someone who's uh, i don't know been through like some type of bad breakup or someone who's looking across the bar uh, watching yeah. people dance and has scars yeah and so I, I connected to this song quite a bit yeah on a deep level i think but mm-hmm. also it's super catchy yeah because your head and your heart are falling apart and falling far from you. Even like there's some cool songwriting techniques that they have in the middle of the song when the music cuts out, except for some like hand claps. Yeah. He's, where he's like, we're 17, ripped you apart. You said if this is like the past, do do. Well, I don't think I could last because now your head and it's just so catchy yeah. and there's some background ooze. It's just yeah. really well put together. It's a really thought out song. Yeah. One of the, the arrangements are great. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the times that you'll hear harmonies like thick harmonies. There's one other really good yeah, one I have in, in my mind that I'll we'll touch upon later. I'm, I'm sure we're probably thinking about the same yeah, one, are. but we when are. we get there, we'll see. Yeah, we are. It's pretty on the nose. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much harmony palooza. Yes. <laughs> Um, moving on to track number seven, which is called Raised. Raised. Yeah, or for everyone else, 
Raised. Raised. This is a, another Raised. really different sounding song. Um, what do you think he means on the very first lo- line, I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved for who I am? I get, I'd rather be hated for who I am than love for who I am. Because normally the line you'd think is, I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved love for, for who, who I'm, I'm not. not. Yeah. Hmm. I have to think about that one for a little it's, bit. It's, I've thought about this a lot, and I have a hard time making sense of it. Because if you're being who you truly are, why not be loved for it? You know? Yeah. I'm, I, there's got to be a reason he, he wrote this, and I have a hard time interpreting what that reason is. Maybe it's connected to the part that Vinnie Caruana sings. Yeah. Uh, Vinnie Caruana, the lead singer of I'm the Avalanche in the movie Life, sings the chorus. Every passion is a passing phase. The hell we raised. The hell we raised. Yeah. Uh, so hell we raised, I'd imagine that's them growing up and getting through in shenanigans, perhaps? Maybe, yeah. So maybe he'd be, rather be hated for having fun than... I don't know. Maybe he's just reminiscing on a, a pastime. Yeah, I mean, maybe... I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. Yeah, I'd have you to You can interpret your own way. It's, it's a lot to, to kind I of never take like. In. Put it in that in those terms. It's interesting to, to think about, isn't it? I have to sit down and think about what he means by that. Yeah. But you guys listen to the song, read the lyrics, see what you think. Shall we move on to something a little bit more straightforward? Yeah. I'll think about that song later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it, it's a lot to <laughs> interpret in that one. Yeah. Lots to unpack. Uh, track number eight is called Twelve Thirty One, um, and this is my last recommendation. Um, Twelve Thirty One. It's a date, obviously. It is a date, New Year's yeah. Eve. Yep. Um, like your head and your heart, this is another song that I connected to on a personal level, because yeah. it's it's a pretty emotionally charged song about being left alone in a vulnerable time. Like the 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 hook, the chorus. Uh, he says it's gonna be a bad year. You disappear on the one night I need you here. Yeah. Um, this song is mainly acoustically driven, uh, a lot slower sounding, and the chord choices are phenomenal. The melody is phenomenal. It's just, it's really good and it's, emo- it's emotionally drenched. Yeah. Such a good song. Yeah, definitely. But also is that a little interpolation of Auld Lang Syne yep. that they throw in three yeah. quarters of the way through. And they add some jazzy, like weird seven chords in there. Yeah. Really, for lack of a better word, dope. dope. <laughs> um, ever since uh, Mac Miller passed away, I've been listening to a lot of his stuff. Yeah. And I've been listening to his one mixtape called Kids. And all over that that mixtape, he says, most dope. Most dope. <laughs> and this song is most dope. <laughs> um, so moving on to track number nine, the penultimate track. It's Darling You. Darling You, you got to know. Or as Soldier Boy would say, Darling You. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do you man. Remember that? Do you remember when that song was popular? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's a, when I, whenever like I heard that song, dances. I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it either. I was like, I don't understand There's what this song is There's an organized about. dance that people love to dance with. What was it? They did the stupid... Soldier Boy, Superman, ho! Superman, ho! Now why me, you! Yeah, people love that dance. And was, I watched it, I was like, oh, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't me. That ain't me. That ain't me, babe. Yes. No, 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 that ain't me, babe. Bob that Dylan ain't me you're Cash. looking for, babe. <laughs> but anyways, Darling You on the album <laughs> Die on Stage by Hostage Calm is another love song. Yeah. But this one is a little like different. Immature and, or not immature, but like shallow. Shallow, I was about to say very shallow. Yeah. Um, About using someone else for their body, perhaps? Yeah, I think so. And it gets pretty physical in here about talking about going into the back of someone's car. Yep. Oh, you know what happens in the back <laughs> of the car. And I assure you, it's not involving coloring books. <laughs> there may be bubblegum pop, but they're not chewing on bubblegum. If, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it talks about how there's like the physical aspect of love when yeah. you're young, you kind of focus on that. And maybe you're not really into the actual love yeah. that can be offered by somebody else. Yeah, that's that's exactly what yeah. it's about. And it's uh, a pretty so mature catchy. way to write about it when you read all the lyrics and you're like, oh, this guy's actually kind of regretting and frowning upon some of these things maybe. Yeah. Like using you for the view from above. And it, yeah. Oh, 
but also it's super catchy. <laughs> super catchy. Like all of their music, it's very catchy. Yeah. It, you can sing to it. You can dance to it. It's, it's really good music. It really is. Um, shall we move on to something a little heavier? Yes, the last track. Uh, the last track is called Past Ideas of the Future. It's, it's a relatively short do, album, do, only do, 10 do, songs do, long. Do, do. Um, I don't think there's anything that's more than like four minutes long, probably. No, there's not. Um, but this song might be the most contemplative. It's definitely not a love song. No, it's not. And I think thematically, it's the biggest departure from everything else on the record. Yeah, it's like a, a their take on society, yeah. it seems like. I think it's deals a lot with disillusionment. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you think of past ideas of the future, uh, one of their first lines says it dead on when he's talking about what the Jetsons said the future would be. Yeah. Like floating cars and these machines and all that jazz. Apollo ships. So you know what the past ideas of their future are but now that you're in the future you can see what you can what's see actually that didn't come to fruition so and we're we in, need to be consciously thinking about what our ideas of the future yeah. are and cuz and maybe think about what we would rather have instead of floating cars yeah um like the i'd say the biggest part of of the the song one of the biggest parts is right near the end where it's got this build up And he says, still without peace, still without cure. Yeah. And he just says that over and over again. Still without peace, still without cure, still without peace. And then he says, for loneliness, for hatred, depression, and regret. The memory of you that I cannot forget. Because it's in my skin like the sutures, past past ideas ideas of the futures. I really like the chord choice during that part. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... What was it? What what part for is it? Loneliness on? for hatred, depression and regret. And you yeah. got that little minor chord in there. Oh, the memory so of you that I can melodically pleasing. Forget. Yeah. So I think this song definitely is about that disillusionment, but there's hope because if we focus on the fact that there's all these bad things, we don't have peace, we don't have cures, maybe we can turn around what our idea of the future is. Yeah. Reshift it, perhaps. Maybe. Now, as we talked about earlier about harmonies, this is the song that has them. Yep. After the first verse, all the music comes out, and there's this acapella part where it's like all of these harmonies. Like, yeah. It's forget like two part, three part, four part harmonies. There's like so like many melodic, melodic parts. Twenty part harmony. It's like a choir going like, "Wow, that there was a world worth fighting for." Yeah, <laughs> but not exactly like that so at all. Good. But there's so many voices going on there. And every time I'm listening to this album, I crank it just for that part, the volume. Yeah. Because I love to hear it. So good. So good. A world worth fighting for. <laughs> Mulan. Um, uh, what song is that? <laughs> A world worth fighting for. Um, <laughs> I don't remember that line. But the only girl who'd love him is his mother. What do we want? A world worth fighting for. A world worth fighting for. I forgot about that. Wish that I had. <laughs> but whenever you read the line "World Worth Fighting the World For," I was, like, of, I was like, "Mulan." <laughs> Mulan's a great film. It is. I the love dark it. Side of the moon. Let's but get down to business. Who to defeat the Huns? What's that other song where she did? They send me daughters. What's the reflection song? Um, reflection. Mirror, mirror on the, on the wall. wall. No, is that what it is? <laughs> what is it? Um, how can I not remember this? It's it's like a really fa- popular I can't song. Can't see past my reflection. When will I be the reflection that I see? Oh yeah, it's like that the, was almost there. The melody was almost there. But I can't <laughs> remember like, that I see. Who um, is this oh, girl yeah. I see staring it's back it's straight no, back at, at me? When, when will, will my reflection show who I am inside? That was a good harmony. Yeah, good job. That soundtrack is so good. <laughs> I want to watch so Mulan good. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm sure all of you want to watch Mulan now. If you don't, what's wrong with you guys? Yeah, come on now. Not Mulan 2, though. Eddie Murphy's in Mulan. That's yeah. all you need to know. 
Anyways, um, final thoughts Tricky. on Die on Stage by uh, Hostage Calm. Great I album. think this song is great. I'm, I'm sorry, album. I think this album's great. Yeah, Front to fantastic. back, all ten songs. No skippers. Uh, mm-hmm. Buy this on vinyl. Listen to it. Sit there and just read the lyrics and enjoy. Uh, I wish that they were still a band, man. Yeah, same here. Um, their, their singer got back together with a band called, I think it's like called Fight Song, and they released a little EP. Uh, it's very political, but it sounds really reminiscent of Hostage Calm. Really? I think you can download it on the internet for free, so look that up. It's called Fight Song. Um, other than that, I don't know. I, I, I just wish they had more music to offer because it's everything yeah. they release is so good. Yeah. So good. The other album you have me listen to is also just dope. Just super good. And the album before that, which is their self-titled album, is really worth listening to also. Yeah. Maybe a repeat week. We'll see. Who knows? Um, but other than that, uh, great beer, great great uh, album. Yeah. Any last thoughts on this yam, yamorific beer? Um, I think it's sweetened up a little bit, but it hasn't only become overpowering. Just yeah, only ever so bit. slightly. It's still really yammy or pumpkin-y. Um, I, I just think it's a really gourd beer. <laughs> Super gourd. Uh, gourd to the last drop. I think that's a, a thing on Untapped. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah, it is pretty good. I like it. And I believe also next week we're going to do another one off. Yep. Is that what we decided on? Uh, yeah. But we're going to throw it back to a more classic album. I don't know what we're going to do yet. We'll have to figure that out. It'll be a surprise. It'll be a surprise for you, but we'll know, I guess. Yeah. yeah even though we don't know now. But it'll be one that you guys all most likely know. I hope. I hope so, too. Yeah, but you never know. Anyway. Anyway. Um, if, if you like the podcast, feel free to share with anybody, with all your yammerific friends. Or family. He's nearly got him scared to death. Hope he doesn't see, see right, right through, through me. me. <laughs> Why was I a fool for skipping on no, jam? Why was I a fool in school for cutting jam? <laughs> Sorry, I was, just, I was still <laughs> thinking about Mulan. <laughs> um, uh, the other one is... Uh, boy, I really wish that I knew how to swim. <laughs> be a man. You must be swift as a Mom. coursing river. Pure. With what was all the first the song? When they were going typhoon. to the matchmaker. Oh... I can't remember. We'll have to look it up later. But yeah. remember when they fight Shenron, the mighty Mongolian? <laughs> <Not> Shenron. <laughs> or they were the Huns. The Huns, yeah. I don't know what his actual name was. Shenron's from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Uh, man, it, it's great. Um, so we'll see you guys <laughs> next week for, or you'll hear us, whatever. Uh, we don't yeah, care about auditory yeah. or visual. Um, we'll be back next week for a more classic review. Um, this is a great beer, great album. Uh, you want to yeah. cheers and finish them? Let's cheers and finish them. She better be put <sighs> Delicious. Be a man. You must be swift. Call him. Be a man with all the force of a great typhoon. Be a man with all the strength of a raging fire. Mysterious house. The dark side of the moon. <laughs> Thanks again for listening, guys. My name is Stephen Johnston. And my name is Mulan. (laughs) And from Stephen and Mulan, this has been American (laughs) Brews and Tunes. Here's a theme song. You know it's not a mean song. It's a good song. Just as it should song. American Brews and Tunes. Shibbity-beebity.